And we are live. This is our first virtual summit. My summit's hard. I love so seminar. much. I remember, first virtual seminar of 2021. Uh, if you guys missed our summits, that's like you saying summit. We had a great three day summit last week. Sorry, last month. I'm so confused with my dates at this point. I mean, being at home, the pandemic, shelter in place, you get all screwed up. Okay. So I apologize again, but Today, we're going to have a special topic about how are you, are you ready for a change and how to create, create awareness. So you out there, are you ready for a change? I am. Are you ready to create awareness to create that change? Of course, we all want to have change and better life. So it's myself, Ronald Johnson. I'm a mindfulness coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. If you're in a situation where you lack self-esteem, confidence, as affecting your relationships, as affecting your career, you want to live better, this is where I can help because I've been there. I'm also joined with Gloria, Gloria, a wonderful uh, meditation coach. And Gloria, take it away. Tell us about yourself. Yes. Hi, this is Gloria. Once again, um, I am a mindfulness coach, just like Ron Johnson here. And I do help people who faces any challenges or obstacles in life. And um, because I too have been through it, um, I've been through a lot of struggles, you know, with self doubt, uh, lack of confidence, and just a feeling of never enough. I'm here to help you and um, welcome to our virtual seminar. Sim, I'm super excited. So for you out there, let's kind of briefly go on the agenda. If you need to make a comment, I'm looking at comments now in the window. So if you want to make a comment, uh, as far as you have more questions, please comment. Or if you miss this broadcast, make a comment on Facebook. Gloria and I will answer it. So that way we can make sure you stay in tune. And not just in tune, but also informed. Okay. Today's agenda. So obviously, if we had some guests, we can introduce yourself right now. But first, we go with Glory's meditation because we gotta get centered, ready for that. Minds are already closed. I'm super excited, and then we're gonna discuss how we ourselves can make you create better awareness. And are you ready for a change? So, without further ado, there's no comments in the chat window. Gloria, the show is all yours. Take it away. Yeah. So let's get started. And as you can see, I'm already positioned and ready to go. I'm on sitting on the floor. Um, relaxed and uh, so we'll take this practice. Um, today we will practice the breathing med meditation and breathing, breathing meditation is I'm one ready. of the, exactly, it's one of the meditation techniques. Um, as you know, breath as a focal point is a great focal point to work with because it's always there, right? It's always gonna be there. And at any given moment, there's an invitation for you to move into the moment by focusing on your breath. And it's all about bringing your attention to your breath. And if your mind wanders, just remember to always bring it back to your breath. It's as simple as that. So Ron, are you ready to um, take I'm ready. Breath? I learned right here from my, my heart, right here, my stomach, my hand right here. And I'm ready to go. I'm ready Perfect. to feel it. Let's, to feel it. let's do this. So um, I will just ask for you to be in a very comfortable position, whatever that comfortable position is for you. For me, it's just being here on the floor and having my hands out on my lap and my palms facing up. And let's get started. Go ahead and close your eyes and I will have some music here for you. Go ahead, take a moment to realize you are here in this moment. Taking the things around you and not focusing on anything specific. Just a general awareness of where you are. And in this space, in this moment of peace and calm, Nowhere else to be, just here. Observing your body, mind, and soul. And as you maintain this soft, general awareness, take a moment to feel your breathing. 
gently inhaling through the nose, feeling the air move into your body, filling you with life, and slowly exhaling, feeling your body relax as you let go of the air. Take a moment to get closer to your breathing. Feel it. Is it shallow? Deep? Slow or fast? Smooth or rough? Regular or irregular? Do you tend to push it or hold it? And if you allow yourself to explore your breathing with this curiosity, you will get a good insight into where you are right now. Begin to slowly deepen your breath. Inhaling a sense of calm and exhaling any stress or tension. That's good. As you take this slow, deep breaths, give your body and your mind permission to relax and let go. Feel the rise fall of your belly, slow and gentle, just like the breath. Good. Now as you begin to shift your attention to your breathing, Notice the air going through your nose. Notice its touch point inside your nose. Now notice the pause. How the pause is an experience in itself. And as you exhale, notice the air going out of your nose, the touch point as it escapes back out through your nose again. And then notice the pause right before your, your next exhale. Inhaling gently through the nose feeling the air fill up your body before exhaling again. In and out. Feeling your muscles fall deeper into a state of relaxation with every breath. And just continue to focus on these steps in each breath. Observe your in-breath and observe the out-breath. And again, in, pause, out. Again, in, Pause, out, good. Remember, you're not changing or controlling your breath in any way. You are just observing the motion and the sensations of your breath. Good. 
as you get into the rhythm of slow, consistent breathing, tune into your breath. And you may find your mind will drift off. That's completely okay. When you notice your mind drifted away, just gently bring it back to your to the rhythm and the sensations of your breathing. Breathe in and out. Good. Letting go of any worry or doubts that your body may be holding on to. Let's do this again. Take another deep breath in. Hold, hold at the top and release. Allow your breath to move with ease. And now gently with no force. Let go of any thoughts that may doubt you from fully enjoying this breathing practice. And it's perfectly fine. However way you decide to allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper into a state of peace and calm. And just noticing the natural inhale and exhale of your breathing. Just simply noticing the flow of your breath. Now bring your attention to any part of your body that may be feeling tense. Breathe gently into these areas. There you go. Create more space, more freedom to move with clarity and forgiveness. Remember, you are in total control of your inner being, of the peace that you are inviting into your body right now. Good. And gradually notice the stillness of your body Yes. Bring your attention to your chest and belly, feeling the rise gently on the in breath and fall on the out breath. Good. Be with each breath. You are so relaxed in this moment. You deserve the time. You deserve this time to nurture your mind and to bring peace and stillness into your life.
and go ahead and gently breathe in again. And out. Good. As this practice comes to an end, just take a moment, take your time to wake up your body and your mind so you can return to full awareness and know that this relaxation will remain with you even after this practice. And take your time and whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes gently and join me back on the room. Ooh, man, I loved it. How was that? I would say this, that was amazing. Amazing. You know, those that either first time meditating or never meditate before, this, I'm trying to get the words out, this allows you to get into that unconscious feeling, allow these feelings to come up. And you know, I kept getting the itch right here, okay? But <laughs> as, as I focus my mind just on breathing, the itch come up, then it was go away. Yeah. Feel my lungs fill in the air, and the itch went away. I scratch it right now. That's, yeah. but yeah. that breathing worked, and what came to mind for me, and everybody out there is different, but I felt the calling of a healer. I felt my unconscious mind as becoming a healer. Now that can mean I'm healing myself for one, because you heal yourself first, you can help anybody mm -hmm. else out, but more as I become the storyteller in my journey that I'm going to be a healer and I'm doing the right thing. I'm in line with my purpose and my passion and it feels wonderful. It, it, it feels awesome. So I'm going to check the chat bot. Not many comments. People are saying great. They're saying amazing, but I love this. Thank you, Gloria. And I love that shirt. You guys show for all the audiences balance. Balance within. Within. And I, I do have a question for you um, after this um this practice. So thank you for allowing me to um do this practice with you. Um, did it feel as if you were present and connected? How, how did you feel? I felt I felt as connected to my unconscious mind. I felt as connected to my unconscious being. What felt right? What felt right and what I what came to mind was um, the chakra. I felt I was blue in the chakra I was blue. So my body was blue. Uh -huh. And um, I felt I was dying digging deep into my well being. Like I didn't fancy any clothes. I didn't fancy any, anything but the fact that I was going to heal. Like, uh, do I look like, remind me of a Seth Guru, just shirt, pair of pants and you're good to go. Yeah. That's, uh, that's that, but it allowed me to dig in deep. It allowed me to relax. You know, this is the first time doing a live stream and a virtual seminar. So relax, just, I felt, I felt so amazing. I felt I was at home. I felt, Light as a feather. Yeah. That's what I say. This is, you know, it really is a great practice. Um, that and why we also went live on this is to kind of show you guys um the practice that Juan and I also do on our own and and what really had helped us um a lot more lately also to really be connected with ourselves. And this is part of um practice what we do as self-care. And also to keep balance. I, I keep doing this. <laughs> like, <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> to balance. I, I love the shirt. I love the shirt. I wore it purposely for today. It was um, 
my my friend saw this shirt at the store and she said this i have a perfect sweatshirt for you and i think this is really you so i was like oh my god she, yeah she's right and uh so shout out to her she knows who she is um and um balance within it's, it's really like that that's what we need to really be connected especially right now in these challenging times is just within within i love it i love it thank you i need to get my shirt down <laughs> I'm loving, I'm loving all this. Like when I see stuff like this, you know, like, like, oh my God, that's me. I'll get it. Or, you know, I love how I have also friends who things about me because now with it, you know, with the changes that's been going, that what we're going through also. And right. yeah. And it, it's funny how now they see the, this different version of me now. And when they see something that they know it's me, they'll either get a text or, you know, like this, for instance, like the shirt was perfect. It was great. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you again, Gloria, for showing us how great a meditation you are and will be extraordinary in the future. And I hope all people out there that are watching live feed are getting the same kind of knowledge and observing how much important it is for you right now. Focus on yourself. It's like I did. These feelings are coming up. These visualizations are coming up because I'm tapping to my unconscious mind. I'm now getting deep in what means most to me and what my duty is for humanity. I love it. Okay. Yeah. And one more thing, and this is the reason why we went live on this, is to kind of just give our audience, and show them that, yeah. to give them an idea of what we actually do during our, our seminars and our summit. And part of it is this, we always start off with a meditation to kind of center yourself. And then we go over and we talk about a topic. So this is a, you know, a great way to kind of show you. Yeah, this is the awesome way, mm -hmm. awesome way. So are you ready to are you ready for change? I ready yes. for some awareness. Let's get it going. I'm going to go ahead and share a quick screen with you guys. So you guys can see what I'm all about. Let's get it going. I'm super excited. Okay, you guys already right, saw the agenda. So now I know you guys have been working all day, but we want, Gloria and I, want to show a simple way you know, at times where you're facing frustration, you're upset, you don't know why, it's easy to put blame on something or someone or some situation. I always go back to the root, right? You know, I always go back to the cause. It's not really the argument with your significant other or your boss. It's really boils down to what happened and what is not aligned with your values. So what I'm going to do, join me here. I'll take a sheet of piece of paper, okay? I will get mine. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, because you see a piece of paper. You, you got to do it with me. I, I have my piece of paper and my pen here with me. Now you want to do, do this together? Yes? Do this together, yes. Okay. So what, what I want you to do is when you think about values, I'm going to give you some examples. What do you value? It can be time. It can be space, financial flexibility our financial security it can be travel it can be a lot of different things so we went through the meditation so you're calm relaxed what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take a sheet of piece of paper i'm gonna write the top values okay so you guys can see it oh not that one the one below values okay okay now what i want you guys to do is if you don't have a sheet of piece of paper but leave a little space i want you to write one space Two, space three, space four, space five. Now, what I want you to do, the reason why I said five is because you don't write down your top five values. Now, for me, I kind of cheated a little early, okay? I have mine written down, but Gloria, if you don't, you have yours. I want you to write, take these few minutes right now, one or two minutes, I want you to write down your top five values. So, my first value is flexible time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. My personal second value is space. Okay. Now, for those who haven't shared your values, I'm sharing my my third is purpose. My fourth value is passion. My fifth value is happiness. I'm writing all those down right now. And the reason why I left a space is obviously you rank them so you write down one through five whatever your rank is what i did since i already have mine written down i told you guys what 
values I have. So mind's flexible of time, space, purpose, passion, happiness. I have 10, but I wrote down five to show you guys. Now, what I want you to do is take these few minutes. I want you to write down briefly one sentence of whatever the value is. My first value is flexible of time, what it means to you. So take this moment, take a piece of paper, write down whatever your first value is, what it means to you. This is, these are really, um, this is really great exercises right now. This is great because for those out there, like I said earlier, you have to get to the root of the problem. It's not what happened right now. Obviously, the IRS calls you, if they call, if you get a notice them up in the IRS, it's a lot of money. Of course, it's going to be a trigger. But the trigger usually goes back to a value. Mm -hmm. So write down at least one sentence, maybe two core values. And the good thing about how we started with the um, the meditation earlier is because and that helped you and it kept you centered. So now you have that moment and the time to really think about, not even really think about it, you know, just the first five things that pops in your head that are values to you. What are they? And what are, your, what are your values, just like Gloria said, being able to center and meditate is this allows you to get that space, right? If you're attending the live event, you just got off work. Right now, you just got off work, so you got now re, just re-going to now focus on this by doing that meditation for 15 minutes with Gloria. We're now able to get the gears going. Okay, so Gloria, do you want to share? What you, what you, share your first value and that's your mind. My first value is time. Time is very, very important to me. Time okay. could be this, this time means so much to me and I could be time for myself. It could be time with my friends and family. It could be time at work with my students. So that's what time is. I value my time with anybody who I am engaged with and who those are who are close to me. I put down for my first values, the flexible of time. And being an entrepreneur is I like the ability to make space. So flexible time is my first value, but it relates to is time to travel. You know, we have a career of our, our job. You work for somebody, either get vacation, you don't get vacation, but someone has to sign off on when it's okay for you to leave. So if you have coworkers out, but you want to leave at the same time, you cannot leave. You always have that approval, but be not entrepreneur, you get the flexibility of time to, hey, I want to take seven days off versus, oh, how many times, how much time do I have saved up? Who's on vacation? What rank are you in the file? You can't take Christmas off because someone else requested Christmas off, right? Give you an example. I'm going to go first. Okay. Second value is space. And the reason why it's a value to me because I like time to think. The more space I free my mind, the more I'm able to be creative. I can think things through. What's your second value, Gloria? My second value is self-care. Awesome. Yes. I have learned after all these years that that is very, very important to really, really take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself. How are you going to take care of the other people around you? How are you going to take care of your families? You know, like for me, I mean, I think everybody knows that, you know, one of the, the greatest things right now is that, that being the only child, I take care of my parents. You know, I have I have no brothers or sisters who I can turn to and and just say, hey, can you take mom to the doctor? <laughs> can you take you know? No, it's so I really value uh, the time to take care of of myself, and if I need that time to even just get away for a day, or you know, sometimes just a weekend get away with my girlfriends. You know, it, it's it's self care, any kind of self care. And right now at this point, self-care would be like what we just did earlier is meditation to me is another type of self-care for me, working out. So it's it's any whatever self-care is for you, 
Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, when you think about self care, I give an example before in, pod, in our podcast. If you ever phone a plane, for those out there that have, there's a lot of people, the first thing to tell you before you take off, if you're in a water landing and your mask is deployed, first put a mask on yourself, then your child. The reason being, you put it on your child and not yourself, something happens to you who's going to take care of the child. So the idea is, example, maybe not best metaphor, but take yeah. care of yourself first, because then you can take care of the people second. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of yourself first, nothing will be left for yourself. Another example, a pie got an eight inch pie. If everybody takes a piece of that pie that you bake, there may not be a, a slice left for you, but if you take a slice first, everybody else will have a chance to that slice second. That's the truth about that You're pie. You're so good at this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> okay, third mm -hmm. value is purpose. And my purpose is helping humanity. You know, what I mean by helping humanity, I now at this point in my life get more pleasure off of helping others or how can we help Ben help others? I really just over consumed with uh, the fact that when I drive through the street, I see homeless people on the street, you know, looking for money to feed. The one dude is like, you know, right down in Fred Meyer where I live at, he's on the street and he has a dog. So if I have dog food, I went to, to Petco, got dog food, I'm gonna give it to him because I believe um, osmosis, I think it may be the right term, but when you help somebody else out, thus you turn back and helping yourself out. So purpose is helping humanity. What's your third uh, value, Gloria? <laughs> and this is funny. My third is purpose. Oh, can't copy me. <laughs> it's, it's my, I'm actually curious um, to hear what your fourth one is because I, I'm almost, I, I could be wrong, but my third is purpose. Purpose okay. is now that I have discovered what my purpose is, my purpose is to make a difference. So now I'm out there and I'm walking that path now to make a difference. And I know I'm on the right path. How, how do you know you're on the right path? Because, you know, we talked about opening your third eye, right? So once I've had that discovery, I just feel like I, I just, I can't stop. I'm unstoppable right now. And everything that I do and what I'm doing, it's in line to what I want to do. That, that, that purpose of making a difference and it kind of all ties in together. You know, even this just um, teaching now, um, I never would have thought I'd be teaching meditation. I never would have thought I'd be coaching mindfulness, but it all was aligned to that. It all brought me to, you know, now taking these courses and taking all these classes and just, you know, um, just educating myself more now I understand it and I realize why I wanted to do all this is because it was, I'm, I'm just, I'm walking that path. I'm on that direction. You know, the easy way to know you're on a path is you use a term, you know, people heard term when you're a flow. Mm -hmm. yes. But really when you know you're on a passion is the things in your life seem to fall in alignment. That book seems to show up that person or thing seems to come in your life when you need it most. Mm -hmm. And it's like a ripple effect. It's one thing, then two things, then three things, four, before you know it, you're in a state of flow because you have found your purpose. And we always, now, say, yeah. we always say like, oh, it's a sign. It's a sign. Yeah, it's, yeah. A sign. it's a sign. If you believe in science and if you believe in that and you really feel it, for me, why I know it's I'm on that right path is because I feel it mo mostly here, like within me. Within. Yeah. And you wake up more than think about it. You go to bed thinking about it. You, yeah. you write about it. You always are saying, how can I improve? Or how can I make this yes. better for us? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Makes All right. Difference. Okay, my fourth one, passion. <laughs> now, for those that know me know I love fitness. I love working out. That is a passion, but it's not 
the passion. See, the passion for me is bringing my brand, my authenticity, and better yet, my story to life. I breathe life into my dreams and I'm bringing life into my story because I found my why. My why on this planet is to help humanity and bringing my story forward what gives me passion to know I'm doing the right thing. Now your turn. What's your <laughs> See, now I'm laughing because that's why I said I was curious <clears throat> to see what your fourth one is. My third one ties in with my fourth, and this is why my fourth is my passion. Mm -hmm. So there goes my purpose. And along with my purpose mm -hmm. is what I want to do is my passion. And I'm very, very passionate about what with what I do now. So we share our stories. And by sharing our stories, I like to kind of open up a light to somebody. Like there's a like a light to the end of that tunnel. You know, just kind of helping those who is going through what I've gone through. Because what yeah. I know what it's like. And that became such a passion for me. I know what it's like because I've been there. And let me show you what I did. Let me show, let me help you and, and show you what we can do and get, get out of that situation. That yeah. there's so much more to life than just either being stuck or, or feeling like you're never enough and just learning how to love yourself. That's huge. It really is. It's huge. Okay. Yes. You have to go first. What is your fifth one? <laughs> okay. So my fifth one is happiness. Oh, you can't copy. See, is that your fifth one? That's my fifth one. So um, I'm going to explain why it was all numbered like that because purpose, obviously, I explained. Then after my purpose, it will be my passion. And then after my passion is happiness. I'm very, very happy when I'm doing what I love to do. I found happiness in my passion. I found my happiness in just learning to now love myself. You know, not loving myself in a very conceited way, but <laughs> just just loving who I am and just knowing that that I I am enough. You're enough. Yeah. Well, my definition of happiness is helping others. And uh, you know, you may think, well, we might have took the same notes. We're doing this live. It's just when you find something so passionate about, so truthful for you, you know you're in alignment with that. Yeah. You know you're in alignment, everything works out. So the idea first is we wrote down our five values, we wrote down one or two sentences, if you wrote down more, it's great, or if you write down more later, it's fine. When something in life is not going according to you, your plan, and it makes you very frustrating, I mean, you're angry, you're upset, go back to the list of values. Yes about what about that situation is not aligned with your values. Then once you find out which one's not aligned with your values, then you can start a process of unveiling and understanding what the trigger is and what the root of the problem is. And that's how you start a transformation. So you realize, hey, this happened, ah, that's the trigger. Now you may have more values, you can have 20 values, but usually five to 10 is usually average. But once you go through a situation that's frustrating for you, makes you angry or some emotions come up, go back to your values chart, figure out which one is in line with and how to get whatever happened back in line with that value. Mm -hmm. That's the key. That's and, the key. And, and to figure those five to those, your top five values is to really main thing. Another main thing is to is really to connect with yourself. Once you're connected within yourself, you will know what those five, your top five values are, your core values. And how do you get there? Yeah. And this is very simple. Simple exercise you can do anytime. What I did with mine, I wrote it down on a sheet of piece of paper. Sorry, I have it, but something like this. So every time I can look back, what are my values? What's the triggers? What's happening? Because you can't control what other people do to you. And you, they can't, they don't know what you're thinking. But when something doesn't align with your values, that's when you're now promoting your self-care. 
Yeah. And, you know, you have it noted on your notepad. I have it on my notepad because you wrote it, but I also have it on my iPhone. Yeah. So under notes on my notepad, it's there. <laughs> yeah. It's a reminder. All right. Let's go to the next one. Here we go. How to create awareness. Okay. First step was five values. Mm -hmm. And now we brought awareness around those values. Okay. Now, a simple, another way to create awareness is after you figure out your five values and you become aware of it, what are you going to do different around those values? Because everything goes back to values. Everything goes back to why. Everything goes back to emotion. Now, to create awareness is to when that trigger comes up, you mean go back to your values. Let's say, for example, at mine, it's a little bit different. When I have a stressor come up, and obviously a stressor comes up, let's say, around happiness, okay? I'm stressed because I want to do this because it brings me happiness, but also I want to make, make, make money, right? So what I tend to do is to bring another level of consciousness up for yourself as I write down my stress, okay? I take a piece of paper like I did here. I already ready. I fold the edges. Inside there, I write down my emotion, stress, anxiety, frustration, whatever it may be. On the front, what I did is I wrote down, what do I want to show up? Instead of being stressful, what do you want to show up? What do you want to happen instead? So in this case, I wrote down stress. But what I did on top of that, I wrote down, what do I want to have happen instead of feeling stress? I want to trust the process. Okay. And instead of feel anxiety, I wrote down a 10-year vision. So one step to create awareness around your around yourself is to create a vision. Okay. And what we mean by vision, it's not like, oh, you know, two years from now, I hope to be a millionaire. Now that doesn't set up the right kind of attitude to the universe. It says a lack of abundance. But if you write down 10-year vision for what you want to show up, see the idea about creating awareness is creating small nuggets now so that way it brings a bigger change later on. Bring awareness to, let's say, my case, what I simply did is a wrote a piece of paper inside, fold both edges inside is stress, anxiety, frustration. That's what's going on. I brought awareness to that. Now, what do I want to have show up instead? My 10-year vision. I wrote down one affirmation, which is trust the process, and things that per happen perfectly the way they should be. So if you're going through something that doesn't make you feel comfortable, what do you want to show up? Or what thoughts? what you have replacing that stressor or that anxiety or that frustration. Or you can even, you know, if let's say 10 years could be too long for some, you can start with five. I think five years are pretty good, you know, amount of time to have that vision. And then you can go back to that. And the greatest thing is I know Ron had done this is that you keep going back to those visions that you wrote down because that is a really good reminder for you. I went back re recently to my five-year vision. And guess what? That five-year vision I have not looked at since um, since I wrote it. I, I try to look at it every year because I wanted to make sure that am I really doing what I wrote on my five-year vision? And I have, and I am. Sometimes unconsciously, I didn't even realize that I was actually doing it. But I am because that it's in my head. I've kept it in my head. And I, I've, it reminded me again by looking at it that this is my five-year vision. So now then I need to move on and do, what do I need to do the next five years? How do I want to show up in the next five years again of my life? Because <clears throat> the point of that five or 10-year vision, I did my five and I did a 10, is to set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. Like I have here, motivation, innovation, vision, inspiration. By checking like all in that with, little nuggets too. Yes, by checking <laughs> in with those plans and mm -hmm. these nuggets yes. will allow you to tune with what you really, really want. So you five let me tell you how to write a five year vision. You sit down, you meditate for at least 10 to 15 minutes. 
you open up, you take a sheet of piece of paper or you open a Word document, whatever works best for you. I want you to write the vision five or 10 years as though it's presently happening. It's happening like right now. So if I'm 37 and I would be 47 in 10 years, I presently write down what's happening and then work backwards. Mm-hmm. So if you've missed that, write a 10 or five year vision as though it's happening then work backwards. So my 10 year vision, I wrote down keynote speaker. I wrote down uh, creating abundance around my lifestyle, traveling more, creating change, new different things that I've always wanted to do. I'm doing it right then. And then you're working backwards. That's how you create what you want to see in the future. Create and then in the future and the work back in the present. Mm-hmm. Who are you going to be in the future? Who are you going to be in 10 years? You know, like how we, I did five years ago. I said five years, if I go back, I'm going to be a life coach. Mm-hmm. Five years later mm-hmm. on, here I am. In fact, I think it's less than five years, but you know, it's just, it's just picturing yourself who you are going to be 10 years from now. Yeah. Right in present, in the present mm-hmm. moment, as though it's already happened. And, and, and be, be aware of how your intentions are. Um, if you're writing, oh, okay, I have three kids, I'm married, I'm a multimillionaire, I have a great education, which actually by doing that, you're setting up a lack. I, have, I don't have it now, but I will have it then that sets up the wrong intentions because it's, I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, but I want to have three kids. I want to be married. I want to have money. Those are the wrong intentions. Right. Come from place of sheer helpfulness. Remember how to write a 10 year vision is simple too. look at your values, write the 10 year vision based upon your values and work backwards. That's the simplest way to put it. All right, let's go on to the next one. Okay, how to bring peace to your life. Now, this is obviously who doesn't want peace. <laughs> no, I think we all do. I, I think we all do. And I'm just looking at this for a moment. So I have four affirmations. And thank you for our mastermind group. I got two more yesterday. So (laughs) affirmations are things you say to yourself daily that you want to set an intention. Um, I know we use the word gratitude, we use the word um, self-care, and those are kind of words that we have used and overused at this point. been using it too much lately, especially lately, um, yeah, this past year. Now, I'm not saying those are not important, but what do you want to show up? How do you set your intentions? And affirmations are this. My first affirmation is I trust the process. Things are happening perfectly the way they should be. Be a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Every, every expectation in my life has a value. And I wrote down one more. Let's look at my notes here. Oh, did I miss it? That was it. Just three. All, ex- all expectations have value. So all experiences have value. Have values, yeah. Become a storyteller, trust the process, things are happening perfect way it should be happening. And what you do is you say it to yourself daily. And the purpose of saying daily is it gives you a sense of calmness, a sense of attention. It, it sets things in motion unconsciously that are actually happening. Like I didn't say, oh, I have a lot of money, or I'm wealthy, or I'm rich, because I'm setting a, an intention that doesn't create abundance. See, if I say I want to have, I want to be wealthy. I am wealthy. I am rich. What it does, and and secretly, it says the opposite force. Everything has an equal and opposite reaction. You know, the law of motion. So if I said I I I have more money, I'm basically saying I don't have enough. So you're not setting the right intentions, but setting a perfect affirmation, which Things happen the perfect way it should be. Trust the process. There's no opposite force to that. 
Yeah, and, and, and affirmation could be something that also, well, when you said here, in, in this case, daily, and it could be something that you can practice every day, you know, the first thing you do when you first wake up. Gosh, you wake up first thing in the morning, oh my God, I'm so glad to be alive today. Such a beautiful day outside. I'm happy to even be here and be healthy. You know, um, there's, there's a lot. And one for me would be just, you know, we, we speak about gratitude. I've been so overwhelmed with gratitude a lot lately. Just so much with, you know, the we've come a long way with um, what we're doing now and with, with the podcast um, and with all the support. Um, that, that's just one that every day I just, you know, I think about it and how, how we've come this far, you know, from day one of just even thinking, well, we didn't know what we were going <laughs> to do, right? We, we just, we were just talking about it. So that's one. And we do hear gratitude a lot lately, but that's gratitude is a very big thing. Um, because if you look at your, you know, sometimes you look at your life, you look at your situation and you look at other people, sometimes you feel that you have so much things going on for yourself, but really there's others who's, you know, worse or in a different, uh, who's not fortunate enough to even have what we have right now or what I have right now. So that's one way, just, just daily gratitude. And the best way to practice would be before you go to bed. And when you first wake up in the morning, kind of get your day going. It sure does. Mm -hmm. The biggest one is move from a position of pain to a position of growth. How do you do that? Well, pain is inevitable. Let's first understand that. But but for, for, but to move from a position where you feel pain, I'm obviously if you lose a loved one and he has a tragic family, yes, you there's a way you should be feeling pain. There will be a grievance. Okay. Outside that, to move from a position of pain to position of growth is what are you going through? Write it down. I, I obviously whatever you write down, I want you to write down what are your thoughts. What are your feelings about what was happening? After that, write down what would you like to see change? Like, if I'm going through a, a position of stress, would I feel unworthy? What are my thoughts? I do something to make myself happy. I write down what thoughts would I like to have show up right now that, that will support me. First thought would be, Things that happen perfectly where they should be. My feeling is of gratitude. That's a perfect way to transition, at least mentally, right? Because you can't all of a sudden just be there. Oh, I want to grow. You have to understand the thoughts and feelings about what's happening. Then transition into what thoughts and what feelings I want to show up. Where do I want to be? How do I want to feel? And think about it. And obviously meditate too. Mm -hmm. Just taking that that moment and that time of, you know, sometimes we let our emotions get the best out of us. Mm -hmm. So just to remind yourself to take a step back, mm -hmm. take that step back and take that moment to really think about how do you want, how, how do you want to show up when mm -hmm. certain feelings comes up? Yeah. When pain comes up, how do you want to show up and how do you want to take that pain, mm -hmm. change that into e either you go down with that pain or you grow and you get back up. Yes. Another most important one is practice actionable self-care. Don't, most people want to say, hmm, that's, I want self-care. What is self -care. kind of action are you talking about when I want to take care of myself? <laughs> You know what action with self-care? See, first of all, it's not just self-care. And, and there it is. You have to sit with the word self-care. You have to see what you want to have show up. It could be as simple as painting. I like working my hands. So I'm building something or putting together something is actionable self-care. Being with nature is actionable self-care. Going outside and pointing out socks at the patio here. Step outside the patio 
breathe in the fresh air, breathe in the coolness, breathe in the fresh trees. Be do something that refuels you. It's actionable self care that gives you enjoyment. If you hang out, fuck like you say, with your girlfriends is actionable self care. Me reading a book could be actionable mm -hmm. self care. Me walking my patio, breathing fresh air is actionable self care. Mm -hmm. Going on a hike, traveling to a new environment, meet new friends, join a group. I love remote control cars and airplanes, so I'm practicing self care. What kit can I buy so I can build something? Because I want something that's actionable. And, you know, self-care could just be one of those days that you just want to sit and watch TV or watch a movie. Have a piece of cake. That's self-care. Yes. Yeah. I love cake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm saying that because I think that's what I do. <laughs> that's self-care. It's, it's part of my self-care. Um, you know, and just remember that self-care is it's a practice that is very important to maintain a, a healthy relationship with your, with yourself you know because it, it it produces positive feelings and it can boost up your confidence and self-esteem yeah i agree that now reframe negative self-talk from can't to can how do you reframe okay perfect example you want you have a dinner arrangement tonight let's say at 7 p.m and you really don't want to go um, to this dinner, right? Simple as that. You can call your friend up and say, you know what? I can't go to tonight. I'm busy with the kids. I can't go tonight because I'm busy with the kids. Now, that grant that may be true, but is it really true consciously? You can reframe it as something different. You know what? I can go tonight with you for dinner, but staying at home with my family and my kids is more important to me. Now reframe, I can't go dinner tonight to I can, I would love to go, but being spending time with friends and family more important. I changed from I can't to I can and reframed it because saying I can't do something as we do know means you just never really do it at all. Or another way is you can reframe the I can't to I'll try. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the words and the and 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 the perspective. And the words and perspectives you choose are in your control. You're you're in yes. control of it. So you know, I'd say like take advantage and and create a positive and encouraging mindset. Mm -hmm. It's good for you. Good. Create your own reality. How do you create your own reality? How do you even know what your reality is, or what's reality to you? you know what? Go again back to your value system. And in your value system will give you the ability to create your own reality. Simple. Mine was flexible time, space, purpose, passion, happiness. I'm through those top five values are creating my own reality. That's the easiest way to do that. They're, they're actionable. They provide me happiness. It fuels me. It does not drain me. It doesn't call me feel frustrated. And not only that, it makes me feel whole and very happy. That's how you create your own reality. More importantly, what do you want to show up daily? What thoughts go through your mind? Reframe those thoughts. What periods of time that do you sit down and really be with yourself for 15, 20 minutes, even for an hour? Just be with your thoughts, not look at your phone or your computer or think about the day, but think about that present moment. That's how you create your own reality. Yeah. And it's it's just really just being in, in the moment, being in the present, you taking that time for yourself mm -hmm. and away from everything else. So last one. Yeah. More important, ask yourself, is there anything I know with absolute certainty is right or wrong, good or bad? Hmm, what do you mean by that? We live a society in life through filters, and our filters are pretty much our journey and our belief system. 
if you want to truly accomplish something or truly live the life you dream, is the path you're really on, do you think it's right or wrong? See, we, 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 we've coined this phrase, and you know, we might write wrong um, or indifferent, is really this. We're so consumed with right, you know, or wrong. Uh, don't cross the street without looking both ways as a kid, or don't don't go places you don't know the people. We always consume with right or wrong. But usually, when we don't make a decision about something, it's already wrong. The right choice is always to make the right decision. More importantly, what are you going to learn from that? Because in life, there is no such things as right or wrong good or bad. It's about what lessons you can learn. A business failed. Yeah, business may have failed, but how much did you learn? Oh, I went through a divorce. How much I learned to be a better person? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have two kids. What am I learning by having kids? See, you refrain from right or wrong, good or bad, to what I'm actually learning. It's experience. experience. You're looking at those things that you think that might have been bad or might have been a mistake. We look at that as an experience in life. Yeah, there's sure a is. reason. There is a reason why you go through certain. I don't know if I want to say a mistake. You know, a certain. There's a reason why you go through certain situations in life because it's preparing you for the next you or for the yeah. next chapter in your life. Yeah. That's what those. The why you go through those situations. Now, if you look back. That's what the experiences are. Mm -hmm. Like you said before, that they said going to puberty twice in life. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we always go, it, it's like an evolution. And if you want to put it that way, if you want to put it in a funny way, evolution is going through another stage of puberty. Mm -hmm. But let me challenge okay. this one, actually. I'm just, just curious. Okay. So how do you know if what you're doing is the right way? How do you know if it's wrong? How do you know if it's right? I mean, yes, you um, used an example of crossing the street. That's easy. We know when to cross the street and we know when not to cross the street. But let's look at it in terms of, you know, your life, right? How do you know what you're doing for your life is good and what's and it's not? Well, that's a good question. And the reason why what you to do, do in order to know what's right or wrong, good or bad, as you look at as how is it contributing to your life what is providing you what level of happiness what level of fulfillment what level of passion what level of excitement that's how you know what's right or wrong good or bad yes I like that that's the easiest way to tap into that so i'll go to our last slide and probably my favorite this is so great. great. I, love I love this. this. I, I yes. love look at this kid, these eyes, this happiness. He's not worried about anything. Life is grand. As a young, innocent you, and you know, you look at this kid, you kind of picture yourself as this kid. Like I I why I love this image so much is because I picture my little self, the little girl in me when I was young. That's what we used to do we used to just sit there and sometimes and i i love looking at the sky at night when i was a little girl and i love looking at the stars and the moon you know i love full moon mm -hmm. I, 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 I was waiting for you to make that noise when when it's full moon um <laughs> exactly but i just love looking at the sky and now i realize is that when you're a little kid and you just look up like that it's you there's something about it and something about you as a little kid in you that you're dreaming. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you're dreaming big. You're looking at, you have this vision of your life and where you want to be, you want to fly. And I think we are flying right now. We're like all these little butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and all of us can feel the same way. And when I see this kid, I see myself as really not holding back. You know, kids kids say what's on their mind. They don't hold back. As we become adults, we tend to, well, don't say that's not too nice or don't do this because it may get you in trouble or don't do that because it's scary. As a kid, you do all kinds of stuff. And that's the way we should be living our lives as though we're kids and just having a great time. 
Mm -hmm. Just, just live it. Just live the life. Mm -hmm. Live your best life, and however that best life, whatever that best life is for you, just live it. You know, we all we hear this all the time. Life is short. You only live once. Mm -hmm. but the best part of that is just living your life and being happy and just loving yourself. And find what sure. that happiness is for you. And then you go back to those five values, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's about. Go back to five values. So that would be the changes. The changes that, that change. you look forward to. This and not just that, but bring you the peace that you want and always and you deserve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whatever that best life is for you. And just, you know, keep in mind a lot of these, do, this doesn't happen overnight. All these didn't happen for one and I overnight. This took practice. It was a lot of practice. It was a lot of finding ourselves and learning ourselves. You know, why we do what we do, why we did what we did, but we did a lot of work. So this will take a lot of practice and you'll get there. You get there. Trust the process. Trust Things the process. happens perfect way it should be. And this is why we are here as a coach as well, mindfulness coach. Yeah. So if you guys are in a place where you're stuck unfulfilled or you want to attend another seminar because you want to know what's what's about and be a part of meditation if you missed this one, go to Ron Johnson coaching.com for going virtual seminars or go to glorious page glorylifecoach.com and click on events subscribe sign up we have another event coming february another event coming march this is how you make the steps to live a much better life thank you for tuning in to another virtual seminar this is ron johnson mindfulness coach Yes, and a little correction on that one, actually. It's GloriaLifeCoaching.com. Oh, coaching. My coaching. mistake. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. And it is under events. Um, and we do have the two coming. We have two more coming up in March and um, February and March. But we will have one every month. And then look forward to our uh, three-day summit in the summer. Um, again, thank you for all your support. And I hope you um, learned from what we had today and um, come and join us and experience meditation and get a lot of insight and tips from what Ron and I will bring in on our next seminars as well. Again, this is Gloria, your mindfulness coach. Thank you. And thanks everybody and have a great night. I'll see you soon. Bye everybody.